When it comes to making tonal changes, using levels is by far the easiest way to do it inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now there are a variety of different ways to find the levels tool, so let me show that to you first. The most convenient way to find it and use it is by using an adjustment palette, which is found under, which is found under Window Adjustments. And with that open, all you have to do is click on this Levels icon. Now another place that you can find levels is under the Layers palette. At the bottom, there's this, there's this little black and white icon here. And when you click on that, you can come down to Levels. Same thing. Another way that you can do it is come up under Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels. Now once again, all three of those are the exact same thing. Now there's one more that's just slightly different. Up under Image Adjustments, there is also Levels. However, the difference between this one and the other three I just showed you is this one is permanent. Meaning, when I select that Levels and I make a change and I go OK, Notice how we made that change directly to the background layer. That is destructive editing, which means if I do something else, I can't go back to fix it. If at a later point in time I decide that that move I made is too dark, there's not much I could do about it because it's already part of the base image. I would rather work non-destructively, so I'm going to undo that change and instead select one of these other ways of selecting these levels. And I'm just going to click here under the Adjustment Palette and click on New Level. Now notice that it just did two things. One, it added a new level, Adjustment Layer, to the file, as well as it opened up the Properties Palette. And inside of the Properties Palette is where we make our changes. And similar to the Options Bar, which changes depending on which tool you have selected, the Properties Palette is the same thing. This Properties Palette will change depending on the different tool or type of layer that you have selected. So now in this case, once again we have Levels, I simply make the change, click off, and it disappears from the Properties Palette, but we still have a separate layer. And what this means is, if at any point in time we want to go back to it, all we have to do is click, and there we go. So ideally we want to be using an Adjustment Layer for Levels. Now the way that we actually use the tool is like this. We have these three triangles. We have a black triangle, a gray triangle, and a white triangle. And the way that these work is they slide left and right. And they affect the grayscale tonal range of the image. So for example, if I take the black and move it this way, the whole image gets dark, starting with the blackest points. Notice how it's up in this person's hair and in his lapel that starts getting darker. And then it continues into the image the more I slide over to the right. When I reach all the way to the end, the whole image goes black. So I'm going to put this back over here. Now this time I'm going to go to the other side of the spectrum and I'm going to grab this time I'm going to come to the other side of the tonal range of the whites and click this white arrow and then pull that to the left. And when I do that, notice that the whites start blowing out and they continue to get brighter and brighter as we reach through to the other side of the tonal range, and simply everything goes to white. We also have this gray one in the middle. What that allows us to do is grab just the middle grays and start swinging those brighter and darker. For example, if I click it and move it left, the image goes lighter, and then if I slide it the other way, the image goes darker. So to very quickly and easily put this into context for you, if I take the black and I pull it in this way, and I pull the white and pull it in this way, we've simply added contrast to the image. This is very similar to using any other contrast tool, except for the fact that we now have the option to grab different points and adjust them individually. This black shape here represents a histogram. And all it's saying here is that these blacks are starting somewhere around here, not back here. So all I'm going to do is click and drag until I reach the beginning point of that detail, and then you can see it darkened the blacks. Now, in theory, you should also be able to do the same thing with the whites. Click and drag it this way. However, when you do that, you'll notice that down here, inside of his shirt, it starts getting blown out. So, many times, I don't actually adjust whites. I'll only adjust the blacks. 
Now, even in this case, there's some detail that's lost to us visually, but the histogram doesn't necessarily understand. So you have to pace yourself and judge accordingly. So now if you happen to have a darker image that you want to add some more detail in, you can manipulate that tonal range by using levels. So once again, I'm going to click on the levels icon. It's going to open up the property palette. And when we open it, we can see based off of this histogram that the blacks and the three quarter tones already have way too much filled in data. As you can see in this image, it's really darkened out. The way that we bring out that lost detail is by taking this midtone and sliding it towards the black. When we do that to an extreme, you can see how much detail is actually within this image. But now if we just take it and do it a little bit, that opens up these shadow areas. And we can compensate for that by grabbing the black and bringing that back down. And when we make the swing with the midtones and the blacks, we're able to open up that detail but still keep the contrast within the image. Now at its most basic core, this is how you use the tool. Simply move one of three sliders and adjust the contrast in the image. Inside of my Photoshop Basic One course, I talk about how to use all these other options that are available within the levels, as well as other tools that you can use for adjusting the tonal range within the image. And by knowing which of these parts to really focus on will help make you a better photo retoucher.